Only five nations in the world can build advanced fighter jet engines. They're all permanent members of the UN Security Council, the United States, United Kingdom, France, Russia, and most recently China. Fighter jet engines are basically controlled explosions operating at temperatures hotter than lava, over 1500 degrees Celsius, while spinning at 20,000 RPM, making them among the most challenging machines humans have ever built. For almost four decades, India has fought to join this exclusive club through the development of the Kaveri engine. For India, mastering this technology means three things. No more foreign dependence, protection against sanctions, and building a multi-billion dollar indigenous aerospace industry. For over 40 years, India has strived to master one of the world's most complex technologies, the jet engine. Let's explore how its development began, the challenges it faced, and where it stands today. The story begins in 1986. The Cold War was still raging, and India was heavily dependent on Soviet military hardware. That year, India's Defence Ministry authorised the Defence Research and Development Organisation (DRDO) to develop an indigenous engine for the Light Combat Aircraft Programme, which would later become the Tejas fighter jet. In April 1989, full-scale development was formally sanctioned, with what was then expected to be a 93-month programme projected to cost approximately 383 crore rupees. The project was initially expected to be completed by December 1996. The Gas Turbine Research Establishment GTRE, a laboratory under DRDO, was assigned the lead development responsibility. They named the engine Kaveri, after the sacred river in southern India, a symbol of national pride and indigenous aspirations. The original plans called for 17 prototype test engines, with the first flight scheduled for the late 1990s. The ambitious project had three primary objectives developing an engine specifically for the LCA Tejas, creating an indigenous base for advanced engine technology, and establishing India's capability to design and build military-grade turbofans. The technical goals were ambitious, aiming for a dry thrust of 52 kilonewtons and a reheat thrust of 81 kilonewtons when using the afterburner. The target weight was set at 1100 kilograms, with a remarkable thrust-to-weight ratio of 7.8 to 1 under reheat conditions. These specifications would put the Kaveri in the same class as engines, like the General Electric F404 that powers fighter jets worldwide. This timeline seemed achievable. GTRE had previously developed the GTX 37-14U afterburning turbojet in 1977, the first jet engine designed entirely in India, followed by a turbofan derivative. For the LCA, GTRE proposed a more advanced low-bypass turbofan designated GTX 35 VS Kaveri, featuring six stage core high pressure compressors with variable inlet guide vanes, a three stage low pressure compressor, an annular combustion chamber, and cooled single stage turbines. The first prototype consisted of only the core module, named Kabini, after a tributary of the Kaveri River. This core engine first ran in March 1995 followed by the third engine prototype fitted with variable stator vanes. By 1996, the first complete Kaveri prototype underwent testing, and all five ground test engines were operational by 1998. These early years showed promise, but trouble loomed. Developing fighter jet engines requires mastery of multiple specialized fields – aerodynamics, thermodynamics, material science, and precision manufacturing. Unlike commercial engines built for efficiency, military engines must maintain performance under extreme stresses and rapid power changes. The engineers at GTRE faced this steep learning curve with limited experience and resources. The first major setback came with India's 1998 Pokhran II nuclear tests. International sanctions followed immediately, cutting off access to specialized materials, testing equipment, and foreign expertise crucial for engine development. By 2002, reports emerged that the Kaveri engine was facing serious problems. Its turbine blades kept failing, forcing India to procure specialized blades and digital control systems from France's Snecma, now Safran. The engine also exceeded its weight target, 1,235 kg instead of 1,100 kg, reducing the aircraft's payload and range. Although engineers aimed for 81 to 85 kilonewtons of wet thrust with afterburner, the Kaveri initially produced only around 70 kilonewtons, far below what a fighter requires. The most consequential failure occurred in 2004. During high-altitude tests in Russia, the Kaveri failed to meet performance requirements, ending hopes of integrating it with the first production Tejas aircraft. This failure triggered a cascading series of decisions. 
In 2004, India ordered General Electric F404 IN20 engines for the Tejas prototypes. By December 2004, GTRE had spent over 1300 crore rupees on developing the Kaveri, with the Cabinet Committee on Security revising its estimate for the projected total development cost to 2839 crore rupees. A 2011 report by India's Comptroller and Auditor General, CAG, highlighted the extent of the problems. After spending 1,892 crore rupees over nearly two decades, the program had completed only two of its six planned development milestones. But what made the Kaveri engine so difficult to perfect? Let's break down the technical challenges that the Indian engineers faced. First, there was the weight problem. The initial prototype weighed 1,423 kilograms, far heavier than the target of 1,100 kilograms. This excess weight affected the overall performance of the engine and its suitability for the LCA. Second, the engine couldn't generate enough thrust. Third, there was a mysterious noise issue that baffled engineers for years. Fourth, India lacked the specialized materials and manufacturing processes needed for aero engines. Jet engines require exotic materials like single crystal super alloys that can withstand extreme temperatures and stresses. India had to develop these capabilities from scratch. Fifth, there was a severe shortage of specialized professionals experienced in jet engine development. When comparing the Kaveri program to similar international efforts, a stark funding disparity becomes apparent. When GTRE was sanctioned for the program in 1986, competitors like General Electric, Eurojet and Snecma were developing engines with funding of more than 1 billion US dollars. In contrast, the Kaveri received only 382.81 crore rupees. This funding gap had real consequences. Testing facilities, specialized equipment and the ability to iterate quickly all depend on adequate financial resources. The Kaveri program struggled with inconsistent funding throughout its life cycle, hampering steady progress. By 2007, it was clear that the original timeline for the Kaveri would not be met. GTRE divided the Kaveri program into two separate initiatives. Number 1. The K9 Plus program to prove the concept of complete design and gain hands-on experience of aircraft engine integration and flight trials. Number 2. The K-10 program, envisioned as a joint venture with a foreign engine manufacturer to co-develop the final production standard Kaveri engine. A bright spot emerged in July 2008 when GTRE demonstrated a marine version called the Kaveri Marine Gas Turbine. This turbine successfully generated 12 megawatts of power at the Indian Navy's test facility in Vishakhapatnam, proving the core technology had merit beyond aircraft applications. In September 2008, it was officially announced that the Kaveri engine would not be ready in time for the Tejas program and was therefore officially delinked. The LCA Tejas would instead fly with the American GEF 404 IN20 engine. This was a bitter pill to swallow for the program that had been working for over two decades. However, development of the Kaveri engine by GTRE would continue for other future applications. A glimmer of hope came in 2010 when a Kaveri prototype, K9, was successfully flight tested at the Gromov Flight Research Institute in Moscow. The engine was mounted on the port side inner pylon of an Illusion IL-76 testbed. During these tests, the engine demonstrated stable performance in various altitudes and speeds. The engine powered the aircraft for over an hour, reaching altitudes of 6,000 meters and speeds of Mach 0.6. By April 2011, flight tests had reached 12 km altitude and Mach 0.7 forward speed. However, by 2014, DRDO decided to abandon the original Kaveri engine program as it had failed to meet the required parameters for the LCA Tejas. In 2016, a potential breakthrough appeared when France offered to invest 1 billion euros to revive the Kaveri as part of offset obligations in the Rafale fighter deal. Snecma, now Safran, proposed providing technology from their M88 engine used in the Rafale. In 2018, an audit by Safran certified that the Kaveri engine had attained a level of maturity appropriate for restricted aircraft integration a modest but meaningful validation of the program's progress. Ultimately, GTRE decided to end its collaboration with Safran. Reportedly, the technology Safran offered was quite limited, and their proposed m 88 Kaveri hybrid would only have met the requirements of the Tejas Mark I. Rather than giving up entirely, India chose to reimagine the Kaveri program. The focus shifted from powering the Tejas to other strategic applications, particularly unmanned combat aerial vehicles. A dry version of the Kaveri engine is being developed to power the DRDO Ghatak, India's indigenous stealth unmanned combat aerial vehicle under development. 
This version doesn't need an afterburner, simplifying the design and focusing on the core engine technology that India has managed to master. The 2020s have brought significant advances in the Kaveri program. In 2021, DRDO achieved a crucial breakthrough by mastering near isothermal forging technology for producing high pressure compressor discs. The Defense Metallurgical Research Laboratory, DMRL, transferred this technology to Mishra Dhatu Nigam for mass production, addressing one of the long standing technological gaps. During another round of high altitude tests in Russia in 2022, the dry version of the engine generated 48.5 kN of thrust, exceeding the 46 kN benchmark required for UAV applications. These tests simulated altitudes up to 13,000 meters, validating the engine's performance in thin atmosphere conditions. By 2024, GTRE had reduced the engine's weight from the original 1,235 kg to 1,180 kg, still above the target but a meaningful improvement. Engineers made significant advances in turbines, compressors, gearboxes, and environmental control system technologies. Three engines were upgraded to the improved K9 Plus standard, featuring enhanced durability and performance. One of the most persistent challenges for the Kaveri has been its afterburner performance. While the dry version produces around 49 kN of thrust, the afterburner has struggled to deliver even 30 kN of additional thrust. The afterburner is essentially a component that injects fuel directly into the exhaust stream of a jet engine to provide a significant, though temporary, increase in thrust. It's crucial for fighter aircraft that need to accelerate quickly or reach supersonic speeds. In December 2024, GTRE announced that the Kaveri engine's dry version for the DRDO Ghatak has been approved for in-flight tests on board an Illusion IL-76 testbed aircraft. This marks a major milestone in the program's history. The current iteration of the Kaveri engine has demonstrated impressive performance metrics. It now delivers a dry thrust of 48.5 to 51 kN, comfortably surpassing the 46 kN benchmark required for UAV applications. GTRE has upgraded its engine with tougher, second-generation single-crystal CMSX4 turbine blades that can operate at higher temperatures and last longer. They reduced compressor weight by replacing blade disc assemblies with blisks that are 25 to 30 percent lighter, and cut 6 kilograms from the bypass duct by using a polymer matrix composite, boosting the thrust to weight ratio. To fix inlet pressure distortion, they designed a new fan that runs at 86 percent efficiency, has a bypass ratio of 3.4 to 1, handles 78 kilograms of air per second, and features wider, adjustable inlet guide vanes with a 25% safety margin against stalling. In partnership with DMRL and using India's new 50,000-ton forging press, they are developing powder metallurgy turbine discs with enhanced creep resistance for the hot section. As of April 2025, Godrej Aerospace has delivered the first two models of Kaveri derivative engines, bringing the program closer to production reality. According to a report by India Today, on 28 May 2025, the Kaveri engine is undergoing detailed trials in Russia, with around 25 hours of testing remaining. Once cleared, this engine will power India's indigenous UCAV project. Beyond the current version, GTRE has outlined plans for a Kaveri 2.0 engine. This ambitious next-generation design aims to develop a new prototype core engine, generating 55 to 58 kN of dry thrust. That core will serve as the foundation for a full-fledged turbofan capable of over 90 kN of wet thrust. This places Kaveri 2.0 squarely between the GE F404 and F414 engines currently powering India's fighter programs. Kaveri 2.0 will benefit from several advantages over its predecessor. It will maintain consistent power in India's hot and high-altitude conditions, unlike imported engines. It will use advanced materials like nickel-based superalloy DMR SN742 in its high-pressure compressors and turbine rotors for greater durability and performance. It will leverage modern design tools, computational fluid dynamics, and AI-driven simulations that weren't available for the original Kaveri. Timeline estimates suggest Kaveri 2.0 could reach operational status by the mid to late 2030s. If successful, this 90 kN wet thrust core could power next-generation UCAVs like the Ghatak and Naval KMGT turbines. It could replace the F404 engines in the Tejas Mark 1A and Mark 2, which need overhauls or replacement after about 10 years, and even support the AMCA program. A new chapter in the Kaveri story is the growing push to involve India's private sector in the engine's development. 
Several Indian private sector enterprises, including Tata Advanced Systems, L&T, Godrej Aerospace, and Mahindra Aerostructures, have demonstrated increasing capabilities in defense production. L&T has even proposed developing an indigenous 110 kN engine, urging the government to prioritize technical merit over cost considerations. A proposed model involves granting the transfer of technology (TOT) for Kaveri to a joint venture of private firms, supported by DRDO and the Ministry of Defence. This approach could accelerate development while maintaining national security oversight. Private companies bring advantages of agility, financial resources and innovation-driven cultures that complement government research institutions. While the performance gap between the current Kaveri engine and the GE F404 has narrowed, the GE F404 still holds advantages in reliability, requiring fewer than two shop visits per thousand flight hours. It also retains superior technological maturity. However, the Kaveri's flat-rated design may perform better in India's hot climate, where imported engines often lose thrust capacity. For the Kaveri to fully replace imported engines, it must demonstrate not just similar performance specifications, but comparable reliability and maintenance characteristics. These factors will ultimately determine whether the indigenous engine becomes economically viable. Jet engines represent one of the most closely guarded technologies in the global defense industry. The successful development of the Kaveri engine would significantly enhance India's strategic autonomy in defense matters. Countries developing their own jet engines gain crucial advantages. They avoid foreign dependency that could leave them vulnerable during conflicts, as India experienced after 1998 sanctions. They capture billions in economic value domestically, create jobs and gain technology that benefits other industries. Plus, engine mastery opens export opportunities and enables designing aircraft perfectly suited to national needs. Perhaps most importantly, successful development of the Kaveri engine would place India in an exclusive group of nations with indigenous jet engine capabilities. Despite recent progress, three major challenges remain. First, India still lacks adequate testing facilities. High altitude and endurance testing under real-world conditions requires specialized infrastructure that's still under development. Second, the Kaveri needs to prove consistent operational reliability. The F404 engine benefits from decades of operational history and continuous refinements, making it globally trusted. The Kaveri, while promising, remains in development phases. Third, advancing to fifth-generation technology poses additional hurdles. Although the current version of the Kaveri engine represents significant progress for India's aerospace capabilities, it doesn't yet meet the advanced requirements of fifth-generation fighter propulsion systems. The Kaveri engine represents India's determination to master one of the most complex aerospace technologies. Despite four decades of challenges, setbacks and criticism, the program refuses to die. The Kaveri engine may not have powered the Tejas, but it ignited the spark for India's aerospace ascent. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed and learned something from the video, then please like it and share it with your friends and family. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more interesting videos ahead.